Hey, hello everyone. Welcome to another video for uh, system software class. In systems today's class, we are going to discuss about instruction formats and addressing modes. The general objectives will be you will be understanding the basic concepts in addressing mode and in specific you will understand what is the need for addressing the structure different structures of addressing modes then you will understand the instruction formats. This topic is specifically based on SIC computer, SIC XC computer. So what happens here? In the last lecture we have discussed about what is the instruction format in SIC. There are four formats actually, format 1, 2, 3 and 4. So in the last class I have said we will discuss this in detail. So uh, the format, you, you might remember the four formats. The first format will be only opcode. What is, uh, that is, we will see that formats. The first format is like this, format 1 is only opcode, format 2 is opcode, register and register, format 3 and format 4. We will discuss that. So first we will see what is format 1. So format 1, so it contains, this is format 1, you have only op code associated with it and this op code is represented by 8 bits. Format 1 is uh, 1 byte, so if it is 1 byte, it will be represented by 8 bits that you are aware. So what is this? What will be the instruction for this? What is opcode? Example, I will say an example. What is an opcode actually? Opcode is nothing but uh, operation code. For example, operation code means an instruction given to your computer to perform something. For example, I will tell like this, come. If I say come to my cabin, that means I am specifying an instruction and also an address. Come to my cabin, come to auditorium, come to learning center. That means an instruction is given along with the place it is specified. Specifically, if I am saying only come, what is that? That is format 1. Format 1 will will not specify any address it will just specify an instruction so example for that is uh, r sub r sub means return to subroutine so what is return to subroutine you have jumped to somewhere from that you have to return uh, i'll put in this way for example uh, you have a you might have learned c programming in c program if you if you have a function if a function call is made what happens the function will jump to that function function call will make your program to jump to that function after the function is completed it has to come back to the place it has jumped so at that time you will not specify you have to come there at the end of the function you will never tell you have to come there after it is over you have to come Similarly, suppose you are going to a place for some exhibition or something. You are, you are going from your home. At that time, your parents may tell you, you have to go, you have to catch this bus and you have to get down in this particular bus stop. From there, you have to walk till this place. There you will see a big building uh, near that. A stall will be there. You can inquire them and you can go. This is where you have to go, everything is specific. You will go there. Then, after completing those, maybe for that exhibition, you are completing the exhibition. After it is over, no one will specify. You have to come back. Where will you come back? You have to return back to your original position. You have to return back to your house. That is how return subroutine or sub also works. That is, there is no need to specify where to come back because it will come back to a place from it has jumped. So, R sub is an instruction that works in a simple way. That is, from where it has jumped, it will come back, come back to the original position. There is no need for address. So, those type of instructions are specified by format 1. So, format 1 has only this opcode specified to it. Now, 
the next one is uh, we'll see the next one that is format 2 so what is format 2 see in format 2 you have an opcode and associated two more things associated to it register 1 and register 2 wait opcode then register 1 comma register 2 opcode will be specified again by 8 bits and register 1 will be specified by 4 and register 2 will be specified by 4 now format 2 is 2 bytes 2 byte means what 16 8 plus 4 plus 4 16 that means 16 bits or 2 bytes format 1 is 8 bytes format 2 is 16 bits or 2 bytes sorry 2 bytes now listen here up again you have an opcode what is an opcode an operation code then r1 comma r2 so you have i will give an instruction i will give an instruction that is instruction said add r that means what add r add registers i can specify two registers maybe base register comma index register add r b comma x here add r is nothing but an op code b is register 1 and x is register 2 so the content of both registers are added and where it will be placed temporarily it will be placed in accumulator register that we have already discussed so, yeah. so format 2 has uh, 2 bytes and uh, format 1 has 1 byte only op code will be specified here in format 2 it will not it will not use it will not use uh, op code alone it will use two more things op code as well as register so, yeah. next third one is uh, format 3 so format 3 as you have already known it is 3 byte instruction 3 byte means 1 byte is 8 3 byte will be 24 bits so format 3 is specified like this so you have an op code then n i x b p e this we will learn in depth when you are learning this uh, addressing mode so just you have six more things n i x b p e n i x b p e index immediate indirect immediate index register base relative program counter relative and e is used for specifying whether it is format 3 or format 4 the next one is uh, displacement so we'll see that we'll see what is nix bpe when we are uh, discussing addressing mode so here only difference is in the previous two formats opcode was represented by 8 bits right but here opcode is represented by 6 bits opcode is represented by 6 bits then another one thing is what is displacement displacement is nothing but this is address displacement is also called as what address then next one is uh, format 4 So, format 4 is similar to SA this, but format 4 is uh, 4 bytes. So, 8 byte has to be added. Here, it is 3 bytes means 8 3s are 24, but here 4 8s are 32 has to come. So, how will you put that 32? Here, the address is extended to 20 bits now 6 and another 6 is here 6 plus 6 12 12 plus 20 it's 32 here it is 6 6 plus 6 12 12 plus 12 it is 24 clear now another one difference is there 
the value of E is in format 3, the value of E is always 0. E equal to 0, I will type a small e because it is small e. So, E is always 0 in the case of format 3. If it is format 4, the value of E is equal to E equal to 1. So, format 4 E equal to 1. This is the this is how the internal structure is designed. That is for format 3, the value of E is 0. For format 4, E is equal to 1. The address is represented by 12 bits in format 3. Address is represented by 20 bits in format 4. So, these are the 4 formats. The 4 formats The four formats are format 1 that is opcode that is it is represented in 8 bits, format 2 it is represented by 16 bits that is opcode R1, R2. We have seen an example. Format 3 instruction you have uh, 3 bytes of instruction that is 6 for opcode then NIXBPE, NIXBPE. E equal to 0 for format 3, then address is represented by 12 bits. Then format 4 is 4 bytes, up code is 6, NAXBP is again each is represented by 1, displacement or address is represented by 20 bits. E is equal to 1 here. So, this is the instruction format. The next one is uh, addressing mode. So, we have discussed about instruction formats. So, next we are going to discuss about uh, addressing mode. What is addressing mode? What is the need for addressing? Uh, for example, when you have an instruction that, that runs in a computer, you should know how to get those data, where to get those data and how the, how we are going to calculate the address. That is represented by means of addressing mode. The most predominantly used addressing mode here is uh, program counter addressing mode. What is program counter? You might have learned in the second class that is PC is nothing but program counter. Our program counter contains address of next instruction to be executed. Program counter contains address of next instruction to be executed. Listen, suppose you are walking in a step, you are, you are coming to the first floor, first will you, you will step on the first step, the next step is second step. So, when you are in the first step, the next one should be second step. Suppose you have 10 steps, you have to go to the 10th step, now currently you are in the first step. So, how much steps are more to reach the second 10 steps? You have 9 more steps. How will you calculate that? Second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, seven, eight, and 9 and 10. So, similarly, when you have a program counter, what is program counter? The next instruction to be executed. When you have the next instruction to be executed, you can, you can easily understand that is suppose if I want to go to the fifth line, you have to, you have to complete the second one, third one, fourth one and fifth one. Similarly, program counter helps to is that is the main work of program counter is it will it will always have the next address to be executed. So we will see that first the different addressing modes the different addressing modes are the first addressing mode is uh, PC relative addressing mode. PC relative addressing mode that means based on the program counter. So, now how does this work? Wait, I will show you. So, we will have this values once again. N I X B P E. Okay. 
the first addressing mode is PC relative addressing mode. So, the value should be the six values n, i, x, b, t, e. Consider all the addresses are, we uh, will go to the next page. So, if the addressing is a PC relative addressing mode, first one is PC relative addressing mode. So, the it is specified by this symbol P. So, I will put as P equal to 1. So, we are considering if the instruction is format 3, then E is equal to 0. So, if the addressing is PC relative, then it will not be program counter relative, sorry, base relative. So, I have specified three values. Once again, I will tell you, if the addressing mode is PC relative, if the addressing mode is PC relative, then we will specify 1 for P, then E equal to 0 because I am considering this instruction is format 3 instruction. Then PC, if it is PC relative, definitely it will not be base relative. You will understand, one, once I explain what is base relative, then when we are comparing these two, why I am giving 0 and 1, you will understand. Then we will we'll fill these three steps. Listen, so we have already discussed in the SIC, if the instruction contains x as a part of the instruction, then it will, then it will be what? Index addressing mode. So, if x is not there, it is 0. That is direct instruction. Then, now just specify 1 and 1. Why I am specifying 1 and 1? You will understand when you discuss about indirect addressing mode and immediate addressing at that time. Just specify as 1 and 1. This means 1 and 1 means it is neither indirect nor immediate. Neither nor means it is not indirect, not it is also not immediate. Both are not available. So, 1 and 1. Not we are not specifying as 0 and 0, we are specifying as 1 and 1. First one is uh, PC relative addressing mode. Next one is uh, base relative addressing mode. Just opposite of PC relative, that is, I will put base is 1. So, program counter is not, will not be that 0. If it is third format 3, it will be 0. Again, if x is not part of instruction, again you will specify here as 0. Neither indirect nor immediate, 1 and 1. 1 and 1. Same, only one thing is changed, base relative and program counter relative. Now listen, uh, before going to the next instruction, I will tell you what is program counter relative, address, how it is calculated. Now listen here, for program counter relative, you have a formula, target address is equal to content of program counter, I will put in this way content of program counter plus displacement. See, consider whatever address you are calculating, displacement is nothing but address. You want to calculate an address. If you want to calculate an address, first we will always check for PC relative addressing mode. So, when you go to unit 2, at that time we will be discussing this, we will discuss this with the help of a program. At that time you will understand this in detail. Here we will be specifying this formula. The formula is target address is equal to program counter plus displacement. So, we will have the target that is consider, I will simply I will give an example for that. For example, you have a program line called as STL RETA DR. This is our instruction. So, STL is nothing but an opcode. So, you will we'll be learning the same thing in unit 2. Now, I am just telling you Listen, STL, RETADR, in STL, it, STL is nothing but an instruction, RETADR is an address. Now listen, this is, for example, this may be in line number 1000. So, the next instruction will be, if it is format 3, the next instruction will be in 1003. So, the value of program counter is 1003. Can you understand now? The first, the current instruction which we are executing is in line 1000. So, it will occupy 1000, 1001 and 1002. That is three places will be occupied because it is format 3 instruction. 
Now, the next instruction that is 1000, 1001 and 1002, three places are occupied. The next instruction will be in 1003. So, the value of program counter will be what? 1003. Then, you have to find out the value of REGADR. Suppose if REGADR is below, that is, for example, consider you have some lines in between and RETADR is in 1030. So, RETADR is nothing but an address. So, it has specified something else here. So, that location is 1030. Now, you know this address, you know the target address that is STL, the target address is RETADR, the value of RETADR is 1030. Now, how will you calculate in this formula, target address is what? RETADR, RETADR is 1030 equal to content of program count is 1003 because you are in this instruction, we are in this instruction. So, we have the next instruction is 1003. So, 1003 plus displacement. So, what will be the displacement value now? Displacement is equal to thousand thirty minus minus thousand three. So you will get see this we are not going to calculate you are not going to perform normal arithmetic subtraction we are going to perform uh, hexadecimal subtraction. When you perform hexadecimal subtraction you will get the answer as 0 2 d. The answer will be 0 2 d. So this we will discuss in detail when we are discussing the program. So, we will discuss that at that time. So, now listen here 0 2 d. The main thing is when you are calculating the value for program counter or the formula for calculate program counter, the displacement value should lie between minus 2047 less than or equal to displacement greater than or equal to 2048. It has to fall between these two things 2047 to 2048. These two values are hexadecimal value. If this value, if the displacement value is beyond 2047 or 2048, then we will go for calculating base relative addressing mode. I consider, I am telling you two things. First one is, when you are first, initially you have to always calculate PC relative addressing mode. When you are calculating PC relative addressing mode using this formula, that is target address is equal to PC plus displacement and the answer should be in that range. If it goes beyond the range, we are going for base relative addressing mode. So, whenever you are calculating a target address, we are always calculating by means of program counter relative addressing mode. But when it goes beyond a certain range, when it goes beyond a range, we will stop, we will stop and we will go for calculating using base relative addressing mode. Clear? We are always calculating using program counter relative addressing mode. There is a base register. When, you, when, the, when, it, when it goes beyond that when it goes the target address goes beyond a particular range we are calculating using base relative addressing mode. So, now you might have understood why program counter relative and base relative does not come for the same instruction at the same time. So, once it is program counter relative it will not be base. Once it is not program counter surely it will be what base relative addressing mode. Clear? Two things program counter and base relative. Clear? Next one is, uh, next we will see about uh, index addressing mode. Index addressing. Consider you have an instruction like this. One opcode, then an address, comma x. Listen, it will be an opcode, it can be anything, any instruction, then an address, comma x. That means, if x is part of instruction, I have to give the value here as 1. Then, there is no need for base relative or program counter relative. Format 3 na e equal to 0. Then, next, neither indirect nor immediate. 
then next you have two more addressing modes indirect addressing mode immediate addressing mode and indirect addressing mode for example consider an instruction like this add hash 5 that is immediately you are specifying a value that means it is immediate addressing mode if you have a hash value associated with your if hash is associated with your instruction then it is immediate addressing mode so i will specify one then at that time it is not indirect so indirect we will see in the next one so it is zero so there is no x is not part of instruction so it will be zero there is no need for base relative zero there is no need for program control relative again it is zero then e is equal to zero because it is format three if it is format four so i will tell you why when it comes for format four there is no need for worrying now and then indirect suppose if you have an at symbol associated with your function program for example add le, est, I'll, stl stl at retadr so if R e, if at is specified then it is indirect addressing mode so in indirect addressing mode i will give for n is equal to 1 so there is no hash so it is 0 no x again it is 0 no program base relative no program on relative format 4 so this is the addressing mode supported by your uh, sic xc first one is program on relative addressing mode you have to specify everything for that you have a formula target address is equal to content of program counter plus displacement suppose if it is not that target address is equal to so the formula here is target address is equal to content of program counter plus displacement so there will be a range if it falls beyond the range we go for what base relative addressing mode so in what is base relative addressing mode target address is equal to content of base register content of base register plus displacement correct now what is the range for this the address should be 0 to 0 to 4096 so the range is exactly different because if, if it doesn't fall in the range it has to fall in this one so when you are discussing a sic xe assembler program you will easily understand this then we have discussed about index addressing mode immediate addressing mode and index addressing indirect addressing mode so next one is uh, format 4 instruction how will be a format 4 instruction be there so format 4 instruction we will identify a format 4 instruction by means of a plus symbol for example plus j sub i'm just telling you plus j sub for then maybe uh, near r e t a d r this is an address suppose it is specified like this there is no need to think for anything when you see a plus directly you have to put the value it is 1 format 4 is always e equal to 1 then you can calculate those values that is if it is base relative or program count relative if it is base relative i will put as 1 or if it is program relative it is here it will be 0 here then x is not part of instruction so 0 then now uh, initially i told you why i am putting c191 see if it is immediate instruction what i am doing that is n is 0 i is 1 immediate i indirect in n so n is 1 and i equal to 0 if both are not present i am giving us 
1 and 1, neither indirect nor immediate. Here, for base rate and program counter relative, if it is not present, you have to give a 0 and 0. First two, for the uh, initial two things, what you have to give? 1 and 1. It is neither indirect nor immediate means it has to be 1 and 1. But if it is base rate and program counter relative, both are not present, you have to give a 0 and 0. That is the minute change you have to look. That is indirect and immediate, if, it, if both are not specified, you have to specify by means of 1 and 1. Base rate and program counter relative, if both addressing is not present, you have to give us 0 and 0. If it is format 4, you have to specify by 1. Clear? So, in uh, today's video, we have discussed about uh, main two uh, main things that is uh, uh, instruction formats and addressing mode. So, what is uh, instruction format? The four instruction formats we have discussed, format 1, 2, 3 and 4. Then next we have discussed about uh, addressing mode, PC related addressing mode, base related addressing mode, index, indexed addressing, immediate addressing, indirect addressing and format 4. Hope you understood this lecture. Thank you.